All right, first question. Are you going to be watching the Super Bowl? I am not. Nope. Can't. Can't do it. Uh, that's supposed to be the Lions in there, and I, there's just no way. So you're either going to watch the Niners win the Super Bowl when the Lions had them beat, or you're going to watch the Chiefs win it again with Mahomes, who we beat in the, you know, it a, seems like years ago, but we beat him in the first game of the season. Would love to see the matchup. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be watching the Super Bowl, yes or no. Okay, Broderick Martin. Remember, last year took him in the third round, 6'5", 330, defensive tackle, everything that we need, but he didn't play much this year. And I get it, and expectations were probably out of whack for Lions fans because you were able to see Brian Branch, you know, name all our rookies that were doing so well, jumped right in, but defensive tackle, whatever, harder. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more to it. And so Broderick Martin talked about what he's going to do this offseason, and it's like, dude, if this guy can go – from year one to year two, he sees what it takes to be in the National Football League. He sees what he has to do. Take a look at this. He's talking about Aleem McNeil. He got to sit in the same room and watch the veteran defensive tackle, Aleem McNeil, have a breakout season in his third year because of his decision to trim body fat and gain quickness and bend. So Martin said he's going to do that this offseason. He said it was a big transformation that he made going into year three. It was a huge transformation for him. Obviously, it made him a better player. So it's something I'm definitely going to hone in and try to do. So he's going to try to trim body fat, get faster and more bend. Now, look, everyone's trying to do that in some degree, but he saw exactly how Lee McNeil did it. And Lee McNeil just went from like a bowling ball to he's still a bowling ball, but he's a <laughs> quicker bowling ball. And so at 6'5", 330, so you think about Martin, he could stay at this size and weight, but move around some of the body, body fat, if you will, and move it to muscle and, you know, the, it, just transforming his body. It looks like he's a guy that's just like, man, I've always been the biggest guy. I've always been just able to be successful because I'm big and, you know, not in the National Football League. I have to be, I have to have. You know, because he's got the athletic traits and power. And Brad Holmes talked about when they drafted him. Let's go back up here. We drafted him because of his quickness and his rawness. So he said, look, he chases the ball. I don't think I've seen many 330, 340 pound guys run to the ball like he does. So when you get that, he's got some rawness, but we're really excited about his upside. This is what I was just talking about right here. Players develop at different rates, right? You have Gibbs and Sam Laporta, just instant impact. Then you have Derek Barnes, if you Melon Fonwu. Melon Fonwu finally came and it just provided such a huge spark when he got healthy and got in the game. Derek Barnes, interception. You know, like finally, dude, thank you. You're there. So Broderick Martin is just going to take a little bit more time. But boy, do we need him. You look at our our uh, depth chart on the defensive side. Aleem McNeil is our D tackle. John Kaminsky is just unfortunately fading. Not didn't have the season we wanted. Pascal's there, but we need you. We need Pascal. We need Broderick Martin. Those are the two guys that we we just we need. Now we know we need another defensive end. That'd be awesome to get a, a side on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson. We know that. But in that interior, we got the guys on our, our team already. And it's just so that's the good news. And you know, are they gonna be able to get better? I don't know. But if Broderick Martin's saying, I'm going to, he sees it. Like, I think that's the biggest thing. He's not just like, no, I'll be all right. It's like, no, man, I, I, there's a lot of areas I got to get better. If I want to be able to get on the field in the National Football League at my size, this guy could be something, man. He, he starts just working, getting the power that he needs, and then the quickness, the bend, and drop some weight and the whole thing. Dude. So here's, he says, here's my, here's his offseason goal. Um, he says that if Martin puts in the kind of work this offseason as McNeil did last season, maybe there's a chance that promise the Lions see in Martin can potentially turn into production in 2024. So Broderick Martin said every week, every week, that's his goal next season to play a bigger role in the defense, be an impact player. And so when I look at Broderick Martin, I think, let's go. We need you big time because you can't fix every hole in your team in, in one off season. You got to have guys that are kind of sitting there practice squad <clears throat> guys, whatever. Cause right. You can't go out and look at the defensive side. 
we can't draft a, a defensive tackle, defensive end, a corner. <laughs> you guess you could. You know, we need we need those things. Then here we need guard. Jonah Jackson's not probably coming back. Um, Graham Glasgow is a free agent. Frank's injured. You know, always kind of like right there being injured. So if you if you could just get these guys to be playing well. And yeah, you draft a guy, but it's like, man, Broderick Martin, we need you to go in. We need the guy we just drafted to go in your place as the development guy. Levi, another one. Levi owns a work gate. It's like, dude, got to have him. So we've got the interior defensive linemen. Are they going to develop? That's the question. And so to hear Broderick Martin talking about wanting to, understanding that he has to, all those things, it's really encouraging. But man, it's got to be there. It just has to be. And again, we have James Houston should be healthy next year. So there's an opportunity to get him at the defensive end. So we got players in the man, the cupboards are not dry or empty or whatever, because man, you look about, look at different years in the past. I was always like, boy, we got a lot of holes. We really don't. It's, it's guard center corner and defensive end. Those are things that you can get in free agency. Those are things that you can get in the draft. Those are impact type players in the draft, like defensive end. You can get one of those and they can come in and play pretty much right away. Then you've got Aiden Hutchinson, who's going to be able to mentor and be there as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, let me know if you're going to be watching the, uh, the Super Bowl. I will not be. Also, let me know what's your favorite Adam Sandler movie. Mine's, you know, gosh, obviously Waterboy is just classic. Also love Adam Sandler movies, too, because he gets knocked on in some ways just because all his movies are got the same theme, which is fine. Not the theme, but, you know, they're just they're they're Sandler movies. And so you're just like, nah, I don't know. But then you start looking at all the movies that he's made over the years. And it's like, that was a good one. That was, that was a good one. Grown Ups, that was a good one. And, you know, it's just another one another one so you look up and it's like you know what he's made 12 movies that i really like so like, who else can who else can say that so water boys up there just classic i mean any movie where you go from bad uniforms and at the end like mighty ducks little giants where it's like you don't have a good uniform and then at the end they put it all together and they break out the new uniforms like the like the mud dogs and the bourbon bowl that's going to be a good movie. I could make a movie like that right now. Like I could do it. Just bad jerseys, ragtag jerseys, you know, and then you just break out the sweet jerseys. Let me know your thoughts and we'll see all of you on the next one.